Good evening, everyone. This is Kim Warner, and um, I've been watching Thor tonight, or this evening, I should say. This Sunday evening, um, I was studying some information on um, Mary Magdalene. And the um, phenomenal thing about uh, Mary Magdalene is, is that I had dreamt about her and Mother Teresa, um, Kuan Yin, and um, I started thinking about the female energy. And so that's been over the last month that that happened. Um, when I dreamt about them, it felt so surreal, felt like a place called home. Um, it felt wonderful, so that I was um, crying in my um, the sleep, the vision. So um, what I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about was living your best life as a woman. And living your best life as a woman means that sometimes the decisions that you've made in the past were predicated upon um, teachings or what you saw in your environment. And this is the time where we're coming into energies where there's a balance that is coming into play concerning the women's, the woman's energy. And that means even the male's energy um, taking on the balance of a woman's energy. So it's not just about women. And um, I don't want it to be um, this video to be a, a video where we kind of um, set up a thought of demise in our men, but to look at how we have treated the men and any of those connected to us and even how they've treated us and just ask for forgiveness. Ask ourselves to forgive ourselves for whatever we um, went through and ask for forgiveness for them and vice versa because we can't live in this world without them. Um, the children need their fathers and um, they need us. Uh, the family unit has been in a separate separation um, ever since we were brought over here or our, our ancestors from Africa. This is not about racism, but it is about realism. Um, and Thomas Jefferson wrote the constitutional information stating that they should not let the families go um, together. They should separate them because if not, they would take them over, meaning the slaves that were being released during that time. And I, I think it was around 1772 anyway, it's in the Constitution. Well, what we find is, is that as we go on in history, um, African Americans began to work together to build their own cities and communities. Even, you know, I was talking to my niece about Black Wall Street. And um, when we look in the 1900s, we see them still together. I even did Ancestry.com, you know, for my family, and I could see the trails that they made from Georgia coming into Detroit. And so it was awesome because I found out, you know, when my grandfather uh, went in the military and when he um, came out. I also found out things about my father's uh, grandfather that I did not know. And so anyway, moving forward, it gave me information to document the timeline for my family. My mother's family moved here from Georgia around the 1930s or so. And um, my great-grandmother's mother was with them. Um, so my point is, is that I want to just give variations of the timelines and how some of us um, can go back and associate and see that the families were working together in the 1920s, the 30s, out of slavery into the 1950s. And I was telling my niece that around the 1950s, if you look up um, Richard Nixon and Gorbachev, um, Gorbachev was talking to him and it's called the kitchen talk. 
you can look it up on YouTube because it was there. Um, he had told him that he had told Nixon that if we kept um, concluding to get people to spend money, which is capitalism, then we would um, have so many homeless um, individuals by the 1970s. And so when you look at the history, you can see that. But moreover, you can see it now in 19, I mean, 2019, you know, and you can just go at each decade and see the changes. So the effects of African-Americans or any anybody that is living in a um, low economic situation is still the case. And the, it is the case because a lot of African-Americans and, uh, you know, poor Caucasians or Hispanics are not being taught how to come out of um, deprivation, out of um, lack. And um, a lot of us do go to church and that's great, but it's not just the spirituality that's going to do it. Now, I'm very spiritual, at least I think so, you know, because I have practice that I do every day and I pray. But I do know that life is a balance, which means that in the spiritual context, we want to get in touch with our people that need um, mental help so that they can overcome the vices of lack, economic issues, and social issues. Um, even if there's health, biological issues, we want to, you know, um, be able to help these people understand that you don't have to stay there. First, you pray. The next thing is edify yourself. And the next thing is that you are able to overcome. But I, I believe that it's true that our people perish because they lack, an, uh, they lack knowledge. And the knowledge on budgeting can set you free. The knowledge on understanding that you have to set aside something for, the, for a rainy day. Um, the not, knowledge that spirit is there to help us with increase. It leads us and guides us, but it also tells us to be wise about building. You know, it says count up the cost before you build. And that's wisdom. So in all things, we want to get an understanding. Now, I want to go back to the family, because when the family began to separate through the, the use of, um, say, like welfare, people started getting away from morality. It was OK that we have sex anytime and um, women and men were having babies um at 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 random there was no commitment base anymore this is where we started having more people getting on welfare we even saw our men um going more into incarceration because women were not supporting the men and you know i know that there's a lot of damage that men have done to women and women to men but if we don't forgive and look beyond that, where will our generations be? And that's my conversation. You know, even when I'm when I'm talking to people about astrological energy, I'm talking to them about it because there is a change going on in the universe that's asking us to release heavy energy that um, is causing us to still not forgive people. I mean, here I am and I still ponder some of the things that I've went through, but the things that I've went through that seemed like I would never make it were the greatest um, aspects of my life. They were the greatest things that happened to me because they made me better. They've given me the ability to think about something to challenge a person to when I come on and I record or when I'm talking to people every day. So I initially was reading information on Mary Magdalene and how she assisted Jesus. And her, she had, she was a woman of value. She had worldly possessions. She kind of remind me of Venus, the energy of Venus, because she had worldly um, possessions. But she decided to follow Jesus because of that Christos, the Christos teaching. And so, what happened with her is, is that the energy concerning 
materialism was put on the back because she needed to know more about her spirituality. And I believe that any woman that really lets go of hurt and pain, um, the experience and turn it into a gratifying experience, whatever has happened to you, if you were raped or, you know, if you experienced losses and that kind of thing, I believe it. you, you, you will become better as you forgive and understand that it was part of your process, your walk, your journey, and that it was not just you alone because God sent you here to do a work. And that very thing that you walk through could be the work. I mean, our minds will tell us that you didn't deserve this. And it's not about deserving. It's about what you came here to do. What did you come here to change, woman, you know? And um, so I said, the, the information does not exclude men, but it does not tear men down. Because my journey taught me to build men up. I've had to build up men that actually hurt me. But isn't that a wonderful thing when you study Christianity and it says that you are to love your enemies, that you are to you know build them up when they, they tear you down pretty much. And um, yeah, it's a thought because who can be a Christian and who can practice spirituality when they are angry? Anger does not have anything to do with God, no more than the anger to motivate you to do better. All right. That's a motivating factor to do better. It is not a motivating factor to continue hurting people because it puts you in a category of people that, that steal and kill. So um, moving forward, I, I looked at, let me find my phone. Um, and it set so well with me that I had to just tell my sisters, just think about it, you know? Um, and in this uh, Proverbs 31, it says, who can find a diligent woman? Um, for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her and her food supplies never diminish. So who can find a diligent woman? And that diligence is not predicated on how we, you know, way through the storms and the challenges of life, but the universe, God, and what we've been sent here to do. It says, for her price is far above rubies. I mean, it's just deep. The price is far above rubies. Many women would love to have rubies, but the price of a woman is far beyond that. You can't count or measure a woman's worth, but a woman's worth is measured and what she's able to endure and give. So it says the heart of her husband safely trusts in her and her food supply never diminishes. Some of us um, are not married and some of us are. Some of us have endured hardships during marriage. Some of us are divorced. Some of us have endured hardships through divorces, but it was never meant to make us bitter, but make us better. It says she stretches out her hand to the poor. Have you done that today is the question, because some of the things in life challenge us to do things that we're not comfortable with or things that we didn't think we needed to do. I've talked to a lot of young women that said, well, you know, Miss Kim, that's what you do. And I'm not trying to coerce them. I generally give a disclosure of information concerning what I do to just help them think better because we got to touch our younger sister's hearts so that they can make some changes. We got a, a lot of young women out here that's raising babies by themselves. And what does that what does that do? It causes them uh, to lose life because there is no man there to cover them. There is no lack of information in where the covering is. The man has always been um, stronger than the woman. And um, their strength lies in their physical body. We've had a strength that goes beyond, which has to do with spirituality. Uh, when you look at the sun and the moon, the sun represents the man, the patriarch. But the moon represents the mother. You know, the mother has been hidden a long time, that mother energy. And that mother energy is wanting to come out and help others. It wants, and that's why a lot of us are experiencing changes and even we're dealing with pains and 
you know, trauma that's come up in the energies in the last uh, years or so. We went through all different kind of um, uh, displacements. And what the energy was saying is, daughter, it's your time to rise. Now, sisters and daughters, it's not time to rise up against the male. It's time to embrace the mistakes that we may have made the choices that we may have made that were mistakes and take responsibility for them. All right. So let me read on. It says, um, the members of our household are not afraid of snow for all of them are clothed with scarlet. Her clothing is silk and purple in that time of antiquity, silk and purple, uh, clothing garments, uh, they equated to power and royalty. Her clothing is silk and purple. She makes fine linen and sells it. Women do a lot more than they give themselves credit for. You got to look back and look at yourself. And if you feel like you're not doing enough, then begin to do more. Uh, look at the Bible and see what a woman's worth is about. And this is Proverbs 31. It says, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, not with foolishness. She's not running through the streets, cussing people out and telling them that they are this, that, and the other. She's lifting them up and encouraging them. You know, her children rise up and call her blessed and her husband praises her. Many daughters have become rich um, because of her and excelled because of her. A woman who reverences the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. So the Lord is within each and every one of us. God is within us. You know, Jesus told us that the kingdom of heaven is within. And so our responsibility to our life is to be released from toxic energy, toxic thoughts, anger, hate, and bitterness so that we can pursue more, so that we can be more, so that we can live more, so that we can come together congruently. And after all, so that we can have the life that we have dreamed of because dreams come true, but dreams come through empowerment, not depowering. Empowerment means that I am empowered to grow beyond who I have been what I've been yesterday, no more, but today who I am and then what I am going to be tomorrow. Life changes are about detachment. It is not about suffering. God brings um, times when we have to detach because we were never meant to be codependent. We were never meant to be attached to uh, others. It's our time, ladies, to find our voice for those who have not been speaking. It's our time to not uh, abuse power, but to use the power that God has given us in a perfected way, meaning community wise, unity within our households. You know, if you have kids and family that don't accept you, don't stay there, but don't make it like that's just how it is and that you'll never forgive them. Let God settle the score of whatever the issues are and you keep praying for them. You keep praying for family. You don't give up on them. You forgive wherever the situation is. Listen, I know it can be hard for a lot of people because I've been through a lot with my own family, with my own children. But the, the best part of life for me was to say it's in God's hands or to let go. It's so easy to be angry. But the challenging part is what makes you better, which is finding the peace and the love in whatever situation you went through with family or with a husband or with an ex-husband. Why would you stay angry when it's not doing anyone any good? It's not going to do you any good. It makes you sick. So the woman of prize, the woman of worth is going to push through anger and bitterness. She's going to push through and she's going to find the love that God said, that love that kills a multitude of sin. Because women and daughters, when you allow anger, jealousy, bitterness, um, fault finding, blaming, um, confusion and worry 
to come in and, and lack and become a paramount um, figure in your life, what happens is, is that you've given your life over to another God. The God of love, peace, joy, and happiness is who we're supposed to be serving. So we have to begin to really think. Think about who we're serving, when we're serving, all right? And always remember that serving is the way because whatever you need, your service to God's people is what's gonna get you the blessing. If you love God, then you have to love God's people. You can't just love God. You're a servant of God, you elevate, you become more and more godly as you sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Sacrifice the hurt. Let it go. Because most people want to hold on to the hurt anyway. They don't know why, but it's comfortable. They want to hold on to anger because it's comfortable. All of these are defense mechanisms. So what happens when you let it go? What happens when you say, I trust you, God? What happens when you continually say, I trust you? I trust you with what I'm walking through. I trust you that things are turning around for me. I trust you that the new energy that I'm taking on is pushing out that old dead energy where there was no prosperity. I trust you, God, that I'm on the path and I'm going to look to you and pray to you for, for the order, for the guidance, for the direction. And, and that is true. So I've been um, on a couple of days because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, when I'm working, I don't get to record as much. But um, I love you guys. And I'm looking forward to working with women that have a heart to be more than they've been. You can email me or inbox me, you know, for um, appointments. Um, and I think that that's about it. Uh, you can also email me if you have any questions. And I thank you for subscribing. And I thank you for listening. And I thank you for the unity, wherever you are in the world. Um, I thank you for being who you are. We're all wonderful. And we are created in the image of God, which is all good. But let us let our light shine, sisters. All right, I love you. God bless you. Good night.